All right, what is going on everybody? Mr. Martin here. This is 9.4 factoring polynomials. Now we've talked about quadratic trinomials a little bit. We learned some factor by grouping. We also use some zero product rule today. We're gonna kind of make things just a little bit more difficult and have a bunch of different uh, types of looking polynomials uh, that we can still factor by using the stuff that we've already learned. So we are gonna rewrite these in standard form and factor them or maybe solve them um, for their zeros, okay? So some of the things that we should know, all right, when factoring polynomials that are not in standard form, we wanna look for uh, a couple things and use these steps to approach solving them. So use this as a guide when factoring. So the first thing, is it in standard form? We always wanna be in standard form. If it is not, um, I mentioned this here because you're gonna see some problems like it. If you are not in standard form, take a look. Do we have any distribution or combining of like terms that we can do? We always want to do that first. If we see some parentheses, let's go ahead and distribute everything out and then see if we have something that we can factor. And then remember, we got those properties of equality that we learned when solving equations um, because we want to put all the terms on one side of the equation. Then our next piece, is there a GCF that can be factored out? After we're in standard form, we do want to look, is there a GCF? If there is, we want to take that thing out of there. All right, next, can it even be factored? Sometimes they can't. Remember, if you can't find two terms that multiply to make your C term that also add up to make your B term, then we have something that we call prime. So we just want to say prime or cannot be factored. Okay, next, always look, do you have a special case polynomial? Remember those difference of squares or sum of squares that I talked about? Being able to identify those is gonna help you factor quickly and actually help you factor completely. So you always wanna look, if yes, follow the procedure for those special cases. Okay, if you remember the tricks, they're actually really easy to do. If not, then just go ahead and start factor by grouping um, or maybe some other method that you might have looked up on your own. Remember the internet has uh, tons of different videos that you can find to help you factoring. And then last but not least, am I factoring or am I solving? Remember, always read what it's asking you. If it wants you to just factor, then just go ahead and factor. If you're solving, then you should have um, actual solutions for those zeros. All right, so this is something that I follow every time I work on these and I do pretty well. <clears throat> All right. Example number one, this says factor the expression completely. So am I solving this? No, I'm just factoring. So this wants me to um, factor completely. So first I look, am I in standard form? Well, I got, uh, remember here, I'm gonna put it up here just so you can see it. Remember standard form is your quadratic term, your squared term. Then you have your linear term, which is your variable with an exponent of one, and then your constant. So I got my quadratic term, my linear term and my constant, I am in descending order. Yes, I am in standard form. So then the next piece that I gotta ask myself, do I have a GCF? Well, I got an X, an X, no X. So I gotta look at my integers here. Can I take something out? Is there something that goes into all of these? Yes, there is, and that is a seven. So I'm gonna factor out that seven. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and divide. 21X squared divided by seven. That's gonna give me three x squared. Negative 14 x divided by seven, that is a negative two x. Negative 56 divided by seven, that is a negative eight. Okay, now remember this seven is just gonna sit there on the outside, we factored it out. We are gonna actually factor this piece here inside that parentheses. So what's our a times c value? We got three times eight, that's gonna give me 24. Okay, the next thing that I wanna look at, remember I got these two symbols here. I have a negative C value. So if you remember from the previous lesson, I'm gonna need one positive, one negative value. I need two numbers with a difference of two in between them. So remember, you can always just go down your factors, one and 24, two and 12, three and eight, four and six. Ah, four and six, looks like there's a difference of two between these. So remember, a sign the sign of your B term to your bigger factor. My bigger factor out of four and six is gonna be six, so I need the negative there. 
and the positive there. Let's go ahead and rewrite this. So this is where I might want to use brackets. Okay, brackets is just something that we can use on top of parentheses. So this is the same as a parenthesis, but I am going to group 3x squared, and I'm going to do a plus 4x. Remember, I'm splitting up this middle term. And then I got minus 6x, and then I drop down my c term. So I'm going to put that in brackets because I'm going to need parentheses to group these two terms here. All right, my 7 is on the outside. Bracket, let's see. What am I factoring out? Looks like I'm taking out an x. So I'm left with 3x plus 4. Over here, looks like I could take out a negative 2. Remember, if this is negative, always factor out that negative. And then I'm left with 3x plus 4. All right. And then my 7 is on the outside. Let's go ahead and make our binomials. We got x minus 2, and we got 3x plus 4. We are done -zo. Okay, so this is a little bit like something you saw in 9.3 where you just need to take out a GCF first. All right, go ahead, pause the video, try the one on the right, and then come on back. All right, welcome back. So this is what I got. I was able to factor out a five after I did so. My AC value was 40. I split that up as negative 20 and positive two. Ended up with this. All right, so this is one type that you might see where it's just taking out the GCF. Let's take a look at example number two. Ah, here's that piece where I say we got parentheses. This means that we want to distribute, combine like terms, and then start moving things together. So x times x, we're going to get x squared, x times 24, positive 24x. And then we got equals 48x, and 48 times negative 3, uh, let me use my brain here, negative 144. All right, remember I want everything on one side. Let's go ahead and move everything to the left. So I'm gonna do a minus 48x here. And I'm also gonna add this 144. We wanna get rid of both of these. So, this will now become, x squared will drop down. Let's see, 24x minus 48x, that's going to give me a negative 24x. And then I'm going to sub, uh, add 144 to this side over here. So I got plus 144. And since this was an equal sign, this means I am solving. So I'm going to set this equal to 0. Okay, so now I take a look. Well, I have a minus and a plus here. Okay, but let's take a look at this. Well, 144, what do I know about that number? Well, that, my friends, is a perfect square. That is actually 12 squared. Okay, so remember, if we have a perfect square as our C term, we kind of want to look at our B term and ask ourselves, is it two times double what the square root of our C term is? Well, 144, we know, is 12 times 12. So let's take a look. Is 24 double 12? It sure is. So this is actually a special case. We have a sum of squares. And if you remember from the previous unit, we don't need to sit there and break that middle term up. We already know that this is going to be x minus 12, x minus 12. So remember, if you need help, on identifying how to do the sum of squares go back to 9.2 watch the video it's at the very end the last page of the notes so x time uh, x minus 12 times x minus 12 we can actually write that as x minus 12 squared and we need to do the product rule because this is set equal to zero so we are setting this binomial equal to zero and to solve we get x is equal to positive 12 so this one has only one answer. All right, you know the drill. Pause the video, try the next one on your own, and then come. All right, welcome back. So on the next one, we did not have a sum of squares. Uh, we went ahead and moved everything from the right side over to the left. I ended up getting this right here, 3x squared plus 7x minus 20. My AC was 60. 
I did have a negative C term, so I'm looking at a positive and a negative with a difference of 7, and that would be 5 and 12. I ended up with negative 4 and 5 thirds. All right, so these are some types that you might see in this section. Let's go to example number three. Oh no, fractions. What do I do when I got fractions? Well, we clear them. Okay, remember this was uh, something that we talked about in previous lessons. Uh, probably unit two, solving equations. You might want to go back and check out unit two. Um, and remember, we do that by multiplying all of our terms by our lowest common multiple. And our lowest common multiple in this case is 48. So I'm gonna multiply this by 48. I'm gonna multiply this one by 48. If I could write four, 48. And then this one right there, I also gotta multiply that by 48. So remember this 48 and this 48 go away. We are left with x squared, 48 divided by three, that's going to give me what? 19? Is that 19? No. Sixteen. So remember, 48 divided by 3, that's going to give me 16. And then you have that x at the top, because that's the same as saying 48x divided by 3. And you would just divide in there and keep the x. All right, 48 times 1 is 48. All right, do I have a GCF? I do not. Oh, remember, this is set equal to 0. My a times c value, that is going to be 48. I'm going to find these factors. 1 and 48, that's the easy one. 2 and 24, that is also the easy one. Uh, what about... 3, well we know 3 and 16, right? Let's do the next one, we got 4 and 12. All right, well, 4 plus 12, right? Because if you took a look, remember this is plus and plus, so we're gonna end up with two positives. Positive 4 and positive 12 will make 16. Let's go ahead and rewrite this. So we got x squared plus 4x plus 12x plus 48. We want to group and group. Then we're going to take out an x. We're going to be left with x plus 4. 12 and 48 looks like 12 can go into 48, so we're going to take out a 12. And when we divide, we get x plus 4. These are matching. We are good to go. So we got x plus 12 times x plus 4. Don't forget, like I did, these are all equal to 0. Then we want to set each of these equal to zero. So what plus 12 will give me zero? Well, that's going to be a negative 12. And what plus four would give me a zero? That is a negative number also, negative four. All right, pause the video, try the next one on your own. All right, welcome back. So the lowest common multiple for this one was 18. I multiplied that across the board. Um, I didn't show it here, right, because what's anything times zero? We should have done it on uh, both sides, but we do know that anything times zero is zero, so we're really just doing this side. Uh, AC value is 18, plus and plus. We're looking at 9 and 2. We split those up, and we get negative 9 and negative 2. All right, so you might see something like this where you got some fractions. Easy peasy, just clear them out. All right, example number four. All right, so we got y to the third. Who remembers what these are called? Those are cubics. All right, so let's go ahead and get everything on one side and see what we can do. So we're gonna subtract from both sides. So I'm gonna get y cubed minus 100y. Uh, let's see, y is equal to zero. Then I wanna ask, do I have a GCF? I sure do, I got this y that I can take out. So I got y, I am left with y squared minus 100 equals zero. Ah, what do I notice about this? Well, if I go back to my 9.2 notes, this also is a special case uh, polynomial. This one, 100, that is a perfect square and y squared is a perfect squared, and I have a minus sign, and I only got two terms. Can you call it? Yes, this is a 
difference of squares. And if you remember difference of squares, we just take the square root of this number, which is 10, and it is always opposite signs. So we got y plus 10, y minus 10 equals zero. All right, and if you remember zero product rule from 9.1, we got three terms here. We set all of these equal to zero and we solve. So if we set y equal to zero, we're gonna get zero. y plus 10 equal to zero will give us negative 10 and y minus 10 set to zero will give us positive 10. That's our three answers right there. All right, boom. Go ahead, pause right here. You know what to do. Come on back, try it yourself. All right, welcome back. So this one, we moved that 25x over, so we get x squared minus 25x. We had an x that we took out, and then we factored, but hold up. Why does this one have three answers? This one has two. Yes, 25 is a perfect square, but is x a perfect square? No, it is not. So this is as fully factored as we can go before solving. We set x equal to zero, we got a zero. x minus 25, we get positive 25 all right so always take a look sometimes you got to look really closely don't just you know let the blind lead the blind um, always take a look at what you're doing and use those steps all right and our last example example number five this says to factor the polynomial with the factor by grouping method here we're starting off with four terms we have this three this is actually a cubic polynomial um, and we can solve this by doing factor by grouping. So we are simply going to group the first two and we're going to group the second two. What is my GCF here? Well I could take out a x squared and then I am left with, I took out two of them, I am left with one of them. x squared came out so I am left with minus four. Alright, 5x and negative 20 well, it looks like 5 can go into 20, so I'm going to take out a positive 5, and then I am left with x minus 4. x squared plus 5, that is okay. We cannot fully factor this. And then we got the x minus 4. And this is our finished product. Very simple. Factor by grouping is a great tool to use. All right, one last pause, and then come on back. All right, welcome back, great to have you. So this is what I got, x squared plus three times x minus eight. I followed the same thing that I did in the last one, group and group. All right, gang, that is all I have for you today. This is the last part of our section. This sums it up, okay? Make sure that you do the practice. There are a lot of good ones on there. Uh, remember, ask a friend for help, ask a teacher. Tutor.com is a great place to go. Um, Catch you on the next one. Peace.